Why hello there, Anxious Cynic back again, continuing our beginner's guide series in Minimator. So what we're going to show today is how to add sound to your animation within Minimator itself. Before we get started, I want to go ahead and preface this. This will slow down your project in terms of rendering, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't really recommend it unless it's just to kind of animate to sound and then export the video by itself and then add the sound in a video editor. But if for whatever reason you need to do it, this is how you do it. Let's go ahead and turn off rendering there. So what we're going to go and do is go up here and then you have this little music button icon right there, the music note audio track we're going to create that and then as you can see that gives us an audio track within our timeline so all i'm going to do is just click on this and make a keyframe there and uh yeah we get a little option up here for the sound it says sound none and then we have the audio track properties and right here we can actually parent this if you wanted to have several audio tracks maybe for different characters and stuff this would help you kind of keep up with them so that you can parent them and then you would know that that track is for that character sounds and all that kind of stuff but for this example we should be okay by just leaving this not parented on the timeline. And then we have this add sound button. If I click on this, it's gonna bring up a dialog box. I said that weird, I don't know why. The dialog box came up on my other monitor so you can't see it, but it's gonna bring up that, just something like that right there. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just navigate to a sound. And I have a folder on my computer that is the Minecraft sounds. I'll try to put a link in the description if you don't have the Minecraft sounds. This is by a user named Voxy on the Minimator forums. He made this available and uh, that's what we're going to be using is the Minecraft sounds in that pack. So we're going to go ahead and bring in a grass sound. So we're going to go ahead and open that. And then as you can see there, it imported it. And then down here we have this little line here. And let's see what happens when we play that. There you go. You hear that little sound ratch there. And as you can see here, the sound says none. And we just have it on grass one. And then you'll see there that it kind of shows the waveform or something for that anyway so now that we've got that selected and then when we click on this this is our uh basically our keyframe has been replaced with this uh you know thing here when i added the grass sound there you'll see that it actually made a new keyframe technically so i'm going to go ahead and delete that and then if you just click on this and add a keyframe then it's by default is going to add that same sound so let's go ahead and add another one we're just going to go ahead and do grass 2 because there's multiple grass sounds and for this one as you can see it created a new keyframe for each one and now this one is grass 1 this one's grass 2 so we're going to go ahead and delete this one we'll just have grass 2 there then we're going to go ahead and add sound again we're going to do grass 3 just like so and then that went ahead and added a keyframe and you'll see this already grass 3 and then if we go ahead and add another keyframe then we can just change this one back to grass 1 or whatever we want to do so another thing is the volume you can obviously adjust the volume here uh, that kind of speaks for itself you have the start time and end time and one thing you'll notice when we play this there's that slight little pop at the end because the sound is sort of like restarting already so what I want to do is just drag this end time down and uh, we'll just go ahead, let's see if we can click on all these. We're going to select all these here and we're just going to drag this down to shorten that end just a little bit so we don't get that little pop at the end. Just like so. And there's your sound. And then we can actually use this to go ahead and sync up this walk to sound. Maybe just a bit here. Let's see, when his foot comes down, we'll try to have it play something like that. Don't really know. I'm not going to worry about getting it too perfect here. And Steve's walking. And then what I can do here, I'm going to highlight all these. I'm going to click copy, control C. We're going to go down here and control V. And then for these, we're going to kind of have that sound continue playing. But since he's far away, I'm going to reduce the volume and just see what that sounds like. So now he sounds further away. And then we could, you know, do the same thing. We come back over here put this back on and since he's uh, closer to the camera we don't really need to do that uh, volume change there but it'll automatically be 100% because that's where we had it there and then uh, since he's stopping here we're just going to go ahead and highlight those we're going to click delete and then we're going to drag this one on over because uh, those are kind of closer together so there he goes he stops and of course we had the creeper blowing up so this wouldn't be a complete tutorial without adding that sound so we're going to go into our sound pack go to random we're going to go to explode one we're going to bring in that explosion sound and this is going to be pretty dang old loud i think so uh what we're going to do here is drag this one down to about 25 percent and it's going to happen right about there so we'll just drag this up 
like so. Boom, creeper blows up and the sound didn't murder us because we brought that down to 25%. So there you go, that's how you would add sound. And uh, let's say I wanna go ahead and give Steve a voice. I went ahead and recorded a uh, pre-recorded thing. I don't know why I said it that way, but we went ahead and made a uh, track for that. So let's go ahead and say Steve vocals. And uh, we're just gonna bring in this sound here. So we're gonna click add sound. I'm gonna navigate to the folder where I saved that. Once again, it's coming up on my other screen. If you don't see it, that's why. Um, but let's go ahead and bring that in. I called it LOL Creeper What? And there it is. As you can see, there's my dang old sound file right there. So we're just gonna bring this over. My name is Steve and I like to walk and I really hope I don't walk up to a creeper that decides to explode in my face. Wow, that timed up perfectly. I did not set that up. That's just how it worked out and I liked it a lot. All right, so uh, what we have here is basically this sound playing and the other sound playing on another timeline. So again, like I said, if I wanted to keep this organized, maybe I don't want all my sound effects right there. I can parent this to the Steve character if I want. So now it goes away. I can drop down Steve and there it is. There's that audio timeline, etc., etc. So now in our scene we have my name is Steve and I like to walk and I really hope I don't walk up to a creeper that decides to explode in my face. And there you go, man. That's how you add sound. You can add it to your character. Of course, you could do like some head bobbing here if you wanted to kind of sync it as though he's actually talking while he's walking and stuff like that. I'm not going to go through that. I'm pretty sure you can put that together from the previous tutorials up to this one. Uh, one thing I'm not quite sure about is if it's possible to reduce the volume. So let's say if... Uh, you know, when the camera changed, just like we did for the footsteps, we might would want the volume of this voice clip here to be quieter. But I don't think that is keyframeable. We'll go ahead and try it for the sake of this tutorial right here. And as you can see, I think it's just applying it to the entire track there. So uh, I don't think you'll be able to do that within my animator itself unless you went ahead and like pre-recorded things and set up the sound to change volumes and all that kind of stuff. So uh, definitely not the most powerful tool, but you can you can do a lot with it if you're just doing some basic sound effects adding and stuff like that. All right. So hopefully that was helpful, guys. Hopefully that covers what you need to know about adding sound. You could even do music if you wanted to, stuff like that. Uh, before, Mindimator actually had a problem where sound files would play back with a bunch of like popping and clicking noises. But fortunately, from the looks of this, they have fixed that in the new version, which was I'm pretty sure was in the uh, update notes. Anyway, hopefully that helps you guys. Hope you learned something. If you liked the video, feel free to hit that like button. Comment and subscribe to become a citizen today. Share it with your friends and your family and your pets. And I'll see you guys in the next video. My name is Steve and I like to walk and I really hope I don't walk up to a creeper that decides to explode in my face.